we don't have laws against anti-Semitic speech in the United States, but they have had them in Europe for decades. And anti-Semitism, you know, has has really increased in in, in Europe um, over those same decades in a way that it hasn't. Uh, I mean, more recently, it certainly seems to be going up, but over the past several decades, it hasn't ha- had the same kind of curve. And my point there was in America, you mean. in America, okay. but it, it as as in Europe, it's gotten really bad in Europe. Um, and what I said was, it's like you passed a law that basically said anti-Semites can only talk to other anti-Semites. Mm. So yeah. what did you expect to happen? Okay, so the first one is if people are putting all their cards on the table, you have more knowledge about what's going on. Yep. Okay, and the reason this makes a lot of sense is because we have these very limited internal models, which we take to be the truth. We say, yeah. look, here's my view of the world. I know that's truth. I know that's correct. And I don't know what all those other idiots and trolls are doing out there, but I know that I have the right answer. Yeah. And it's only when you're exposed to those other points of view that you might even scratch at the fence lines of your internal model and start pushing it around and seeing what what else is happening there. Yeah. Okay. So it makes you smarter as well as safer to just to be able to understand, aha, there's very different views here on this. Yeah. Well, and and I mean, most discussions aren't truth-seeking discussions. Uh, A lot of times when people defend free speech, they only talk about the situation in which you're trying to figure out what the world actually looks like. And I'm trying to make the point that even when you say things just about preference, you're saying something important about the world. Like, you know, like that I'm willing to pay a billion dollars for a really good wine is very important information to, uh, to have if you're selling wine for example. But when it comes to truth-seeking arguments, this is one of the reasons why. I mean, John Stuart Mill, the guy was a freaking genius. You know, you know like he was speaking Greek at three. Like wow. he, he was off the charts. Um, and I coined this term called Mill's Trident um, because he makes this argument in On Liberty, 1859, same year as Origin of Species, very mm. clear. Nice. Um, and the three things uh, are that in a truth-seeking uh, argument, there are only three possibilities. One, you're wrong. <laughs> Two, you're partially right, partially wrong. And three, you're completely right. And he makes the point that free speech matters in all three circumstances. 